Hey guys! So this is our last Sunday School at Home video and I'm so glad you've been watching. Um, in a few weeks we're going to start a new Sunday School series for the summer that will be live. So while you wait, I hope that you find a Bible in your house and read some more stories about Jesus. So today we're going to do something kind of different from what we've done before. You'll notice in your pocket there is no story and there's no activity sheet. There are three coloring pages. And that's because we have two Bible stories today. So while I tell you these stories, you can color those pages or you can wait till we're done and you can do with them. Okay. So the first story is a story about God making the world. The very first chapter of the Bible is a poem about how everything in the entire universe was made by God. Now, I wonder if you have a favorite poem. The interesting thing about poems is that they can tell a true story in a new way. A true story in a new way. So you have learned in school that the world has been around for billions of years and that animals and plants have evolved over a long time into just an abundance of wonderful and amazing things here on Earth. And we know that the stars have been around longer than the Earth. And we know that there are other planets. There are other planets in our solar system and other planets all over the universe. And that is a true story. That is a true story. And the Bible tells us that story in a new way. The Bible doesn't tell us a different story. The Bible tells us that true story in a new way. The Bible tells us to imagine seven days of creation, where the Holy Spirit is hovering over the face of the deep. It's an interesting image, isn't it? The Holy Spirit is hovering. Remember the Holy Spirit from last week who we talked about? Holy Spirit was there at creation. The Holy Spirit brought all of earth into being in its full glory with all of the stars and the moon and the sun and all the planets and the animals and plants and everything. And the Bible tells us that the important thing about the universe is that it belongs to God, that God made all of it. That means that in all those billions of years before humans were even around, in all those billions of years when there was no human being on the whole earth, God still loved his creation. And in all those billions of years before the earth even existed, God still loved his creation. God called it all good. All the animals, the plants, the molecules, the tiny little cells, everything. And the Bible tells us that everything that God created was good. And here's something really amazing. The Bible says that God created people in his own image. He created people in his own image. An image is a picture. So God created people in his own image. That's a hard thing to understand. And it means a lot of things. It means that everyone is important. It means that God values every single person. It means that Jesus could come and be a human being like us because we are made in the image of God. And it means that we are supposed to be representatives of God's big story in the world. A representative is someone who is sent to do another person's good work, to go and tell about another person, to go and represent another person. And so we are little pictures. We are little pictures of God's good news, God's big story about the new creation and all the big things that God wants to do for us. And so we are supposed to do God's work and obey God, and love God. And this is the true story, the true story of the world's beginning, told in a new way, in a way that tells us why we're here, and why the world was made, and why we, all of us, are very, very special to God. Now, fast forward to the Gospel of Matthew. That's our second story for today. Now, you remember, Jesus went back to heaven in his back-to-life body, and his disciples were worshiping him. That means that they were saying, you are God. And Jesus told them this. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age, baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. So here's the crazy thing about all this. Remember when we talked about the resurrection being a new creation? Well, God is making all things new. 
all things that God has created, God is renewing. God is renewing the whole universe so that all of it is good again and all of it is wonderful so that it will be a back-to-life universe just like Jesus is a back-to-life person. And so we are still made in God's image, which means that part of our job is to represent, to be a little picture of God's big story, God's good news, teaching and obeying and baptizing in the name of God, God the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who we remember are all God in the same way, but not exactly the same. And we are sent out all over the world to be witnesses. It means to tell and to show and to be excited about what God is doing, to be little pictures of God's good news and God's big story about the world. And Jesus promises to be with us wherever we go, forever. And that is good news. Now, remember last week, we said peace be with you in Greek. We said irene hum. And this week, we're going to say it in Hebrew. Hebrew is the language that our creation poem was written in and that the, most of the Old Testament was also written in first. Here it goes. You ready? Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Can you say it? Shalom Aleichem. So now you know three very cool ways to say peace be with you. Shalom Aleichem. Peace be with you. I'll see you soon.